in this video, I want to highlight something. I've spoken about war being a hoax in another video. Again, I'm not saying that there are no fights happening, that there are no victims. Just listen to the video before you continue listening to this one. Or watch the video or listen whatever you want to do. I want to highlight something in this video. Since the 20th century, most emerging countries in the world were republics. In a republic, you have a local elite choosing who the head of the government is. In a democracy, the people choose who the leader is, and democracies can only function on a local scale. For example, um, by the way, democracy also existed in the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, later Roman Empire, but only in cities. In, and cities at the time had a maximum of 10,000 or maybe 20,000 inhabitants. Rome was an exception, it was a metropolitan area with over a million people eventually. It comes down to this. If you have a community with 20,000 people, not everyone knows all 20,000 people, but in general, you have a few families. Let's say you have 20 households, and those 20 households form those 20,000 people. The heads of those households meet with each other, so people know each other. They, they are familiar with what's going on in the community. So they together can decide locally how the imperial laws of Rome had to be transposed. Because a fisher, a fish, I'm sorry, a town uh, uh, at uh, the Lusitanian coast, Lusitania is the ancient name for Portugal, a town in um, Portugal is different than a town in the, uh, in the Alpine region. The town in the Alpine region is quite cold, while the one in Portugal is quite warm. So how so you cannot have an imperial democracy in which everyone throughout the empire needs to decide what needs to happen in both the Alpine and the um, Mediterranean area, region. So democracy was something done locally. And it worked. Even in the British colonies in the 18th century, those colonies that later became the United States, you had democracy at a local scale. But it was only intended for urgent matters. Still, above the local townships, you had the governor who was appointed by the king or the emperor. You get what I'm saying here? What we have now, mass democracy, that a whole population decides who they want as the leader, that did not exist really before the 20th century. After the Second World War, this illusion emerged that democracy is the way forward and that all the other forms of government are oppressive and tyrannical. Now, don't get me wrong, there, there, there were many tyrannical and oppressive governments, many of which also conducted many crimes against humanity, so I'm not, um, I'm not covering that up here. But this thing called democracy, well, democracy would mean that if there are 10 people in a room and I would be the 11th individual and 7 out of the 10 decide, okay, you want to kill Rashid, it means it can happen. It's democracy, people rule themselves and they decide if it's the right to kill me. But a liberal democracy would say, no, yes, people can choose, but there are values that need to guide the decisions of the people, like human rights, this, this and this and that. But even then, who transposes those values in the right manner? You still need to have an enforcer who enforces it. Look, I want to look at democracy as a concept, because it's the concept people are holding on to, democracy, democracy, democracy. And often people don't really evaluate or examine this concept. Just like with privacy, people claim things that they don't examine. To the, full, to the full extent. And that's why they're deceived. I already explained in many videos that privacy is a hoax and it is a false security many are holding on to. The same with democracy. Democracy is a false form of freedom that many can't see through. Just because every four years you receive a ticket from the government, you can go out and you can fill in a ticket 
and empower. Again, that doesn't mean that you're choosing who becomes a leader. Eventually, it's all folks count together and an electorate that needs to decide upon those votes. And even then, when your so-called beloved leader is in office, he still needs to cooperate with those against ideas. But that's not it. That's not really what I'm going to talk about democracy. Democracy, when we look down at it, it promotes narcissism. And you may say, no, Rashid, what are you talking about? Democracy promotes narcissism. Hear me out. If you live, let's say you live in um, Brazil in 1801. Brazil was a kingdom by then. It was not a colony, and it was a kingdom. And the king of Brazil was also, well, the king of Portugal was also at the same time the king of Brazil. And in Rio de Janeiro, we had a governor general, or I better said a viceroy, that ruled on behalf of the king. So everyone in Brazil knew they belonged to the kingdom of Portugal, which was ruled by King John. In English, it would be John. So I'm going to use the English version where they were ruled by King John. And King John's honor depended on the wealth functioning of his territory. So if you would malfunction as a human being, belong to the territory of Portugal, it wouldn't be just yourself that you would bring embarrassment on, you would also bring embarrassment on King John. And all the subjects of King John would also be, be looked weird at because of your dysfunction. So the mere fact that you had King John above you reminded you of your collective responsibilities to the community. Maybe you couldn't stand King John. Maybe King John was out of his mind. The psychological impact that you have a male leader for the long term, probably for your lifetime, appointed onto you already reminded you of your responsibilities towards the community. Because the community, that was the quality of the community depended on the quality of the king. So if the community was bad, the king would be, uh, would be looked weird at. So the king was dedicated for life to make sure that the community was all right. And therefore, you as a community had your natural obligations to comply with the king. Now, there were kings that went too far, absolutely. But even the psychological impact it has is that we are accountable as a community. But now, let's say you live in a republic somewhere. And every four years, depending on the, the media, some guy becomes president. And, about, and you depend on the media to know things about the guy. So people don't really know this guy who becomes president or the, the candidate. They just listen to what the media says about the guy and they make their judgment based upon what they hear. But here's the thing. Everyone has their own interests that they want to advance. So eventually, you will get people choosing the lesser of two evils just because they want something to be um, preserved. And then every four years, you have the same fight over and over again. And it's tiring. Well, if you have one king that governs for a lifetime or for a few decades, there is a stable policy that's also guarded by the local, local nobles. And because the king's reputation depends on the quality of his people, he is obliged to be objective and to make sure that the common needs of the people are, uh, are met. While in a republic, in name, the president has to do this, but in practice, it's the corporations, it's the local sects, they all are pushing and pulling at each other to get what they want. And this causes friction in the community. It causes division. So eventually, democracy seems like an improvement for human communities. But when you look at it carefully, mass democracy only increases tension. 
And why does it promote narcissism? Because when attentions increase, people shut themselves off. They don't want anything to do with it. So people turn inwardly in complete avoidance. And if they have devices like mobile phones, they will lose themselves in the mobile phones. They will lose themselves on social media. Just so they won't have to do with the community. But under a kingdom, you knew you belonged to the kingdom. So you, will, you are associated with the kingdom. So you are pushed to contribute to the welfare and the well-being of the kingdom. That's why organizations like corporations or cults that have a kingdom structure, they're far more stable financially, economically, and even socially than, in, than organizations that are like republics. This is just a fact I'm showing you. This concept of democracy is a false form of freedom. It's a false form of security many are holding on to. You're far better off under an autocratic empire than you are under a democratic republic in which there's a constant struggle for who gets what. Now, under a kingdom, you also had that, but the, the king or emperor and those close to him, they kept everyone in check on the long term. In a republic, you don't have that, especially not in a democracy. Just think about that. Just for now, agree with Christ and be at peace.